We've done segmental registration. You can see this on the screen. Uh, this provides us with a powerful tool uh, and flexibility so that we can work at each individual level. Um, I apologize, my view of the screen is blocked by the uh, camera, so I'm not really seeing how I'm, uh, how I'm addressing the crowd. Um, so here we have the, the uh, segmental registration, and you can see L4, L5, and S1. We've defined the posterior aspect of the vertebral bodies. Uh, and on the lateral, we will uh, we we'll mark out the, the uh, spinal canal on the old, the old machine, as this is the new one. Um, and you, we can go ahead and proceed. So we'll define uh, our medial pedicles here. Um, <coughs> in the anterior aspect of the body in the end plate. And then we'll evaluate basically our merge between the CT and fluoro and confirm that we have a good, a good uh, merge. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, I think the, there's a huge benefit in uh, hands-on hands -on in the lab afterwards. Um, Say again. Start on your side? Yes. So we'll start on my side at S1, uh, and we will send the arm. Uh, after the placement of the shant chance pin, um, we do uh, a 3D volume, which I call the Iron Dome. And basically, what that does is it rotates the arm and takes snapshots. And then, subsequent to that, the arm will not intrude on that that volume or the, the, the iron dome, as I like to call it. Uh, so we've, we're in the process of sending the arm. Uh, say again. Okay. And with the Mazor Stealth, we will verify the navigation first with a snapshot. And then the experience that we've all had, we've uh, already confirmed our hardware, which you can do while you're uh, you're accomplishing the 3D volume of the iron or the iron dome, which saves time. Uh, so we've sent the arm to S1 uh, through the effector end. I can make my incision. And I go down to bone. And then we use our dilator, which is navigated as well. We will place that on the screen for you. Actually, you don't need the outer cannula verified, but. And you can see our docking point on the screen. Come out with a cannula. Um, one of the pitfalls associated with robotic spine surgery with any system you use is Skive. Um, so. What we have here is an anti sky mechanism that's serrated on the end. Um, place it at your, your docking point, and then go ahead and mallet it in position so that you don't have any motion of the, uh, the end of the cannula. So 
Say again. And in here, we're able to tap the pedicle. And we'll be able to do that under direct vision shortly. On the screen. Okay. So I come off of the bone, get my drill up to max speed, and then go ahead and advance it. And then just with fingertip pressure. Go ahead and advance into the sacrum. Okay. Take my anti skive cannula out. I'm going to tap it back into position. Give me my mallet. And then I can using image guidance and the uh, the arm, I can place the screw without the uh, need for a K wire. Say again. Yeah, yeah. Say that again. Okay. So that was just a warning that our nav lock was going to uh, hit the arm with the screw placement. So there we go. We have our screw. If you want to, you can send it to the other side. Um, initially, I was a bit cynical about the use of uh, the robot in spine surgery. And actually, by my ninth case, I felt pretty comfortable using it. And it actually was saving me time, uh, contrary to what I would have believed. Um, I was able to do a single level T lift in about three hours, which if I if I subtract out the 30 minutes extra that I spent in the operating room with a scrub tech who was not familiar with the, the hardware, um, I would have been able to do it faster than I could do it open. Um, so it's it, it, contrary to my own uh, cynical view and suspicion, it's actually been, uh, it's been a time saver in certain circumstances. And the accuracy is uh, is helpful, and there's redundancy now. With the when you use stealth and the uh, robotic arm separately, you have a redundant safety system because you're able to check uh, the accuracy of your robot with your image guidance. Um, with the combined approach, you're able to uh, check your accuracy um, using uh, any of your hardware, but if you take the, um, the blunt probe, um, 
you can check the accuracy, the end effect there based on your, uh, based on your image guidance um, by looking at the in the upper right hand portion of the screen you can see that that uh, pointer uh, aligns with the divot. Um, if it were off it would be uh, up here and then you can you basically don't have to scan again you can re register your nav say again uh, you know, I was going to talk about that. I, I can place another screw if you guys would like, or we can, uh, we can move on. Tim, that, that's great. The, uh, I have a couple questions for you. Is that if you were doing, um, say, a spondylo at this level, uh, you put all your screws in just through a single stab at each one of them like that, and then if you got work to do in the midline, uh, then you go do a midline incision. Is that how you would do a case like this? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you so well in here. But can, you hear, can you hear me now? Yeah, I got okay. you now. That's All right, cool. I'll yell a little bit louder. So if you're doing a case like this, that's a spondylo at 5.1, and uh, the trajectories are pretty far lateral to medial or, or any levels, do you do them all with a single stab incision like this? And then if you have decompression work to do and your T-lift, you'll go to a midline incision? Uh, no, actually, uh, if if you could, uh, you could accomplish... Um, a reduction and a uh, decompression by uh, using stab wounds unilaterally and then uh, connecting those incisions uh, on the contralateral side. Um, that's been su successful for me uh, with the inner body and basically uh, reconstituting the disc height and you can get some reduction across the rods as well. So you're doing so you connect the dots between your right and left incisions, or the one above and below, and then you're you're not doing anything in the midline at all. Correct. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you so you could do a, I mean, a single level T lift through about a 22 millimeter incision on one side, and then just your stab wounds on the contralateral side. So you'll do your decompression. If you have a central stenosis, you decompress the whole midline from a contralateral approach. From a unilateral, yes. Yeah. Unilateral, and yeah. by, so it's uh, same side and the opposite side. You'll do it through the one that you connect the incision. Correct. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and, you, and you can, you know, preoperatively with the CT, you can plan that, um, and you'll be able to see where you're going to make your incisions. You can adjust your screw trajectory um, to try and assist with um, the distance between the midline and your lateral incision. Um, that you're going to do the decompression from so you can change the angle of the screws. I mean, it's the, the amount of data that you have and the way you can manipulate it is, is very powerful. And you know all this before you even set foot into the operating room. Well, that's great. That's, that's an incredible demo, and it really shows the minimally invasiveness of this thing. And uh, congratulates you. You're, uh, you've been a stalwart in uh, the state of Alaska for a long time and uh, pushing the frontier in a lot of ways. So... That's great. We appreciate you uh, taking us through that. Oh, That's great. Well, thank you. Um, Daniel, where are we? Are we, we going to move on to? Where'd he go? He disappeared. 